Okay, well out on the table here in front of us, we have everything from our recent trip to the antique shop. Uh, we don't have our flea market stuff out here from Andrew's trip yesterday, but we're gonna haul that very soon. So we're just gonna talk about our antique stuff and what we got there. It wasn't a whole lot, we didn't buy a whole lot, um, but we got some good items, so we're gonna talk about them and maybe talk a little bit about what they're worth and what I can expect to get for them on eBay. So, I'm gonna put my total spend up here in the corner because off the top of my head, I can't remember what it is. And a lot of these items, when I purchase them at the antique shop, they take the tags off because they keep the tags. So, yeah. All right, well, where should we start? Um, you know what, let's start on this side of the table. We will start with our really awesome Vegas clock. Now I bought this because I just thought it was a really neat design. I love the black and the contrast of the dice. And I just thought it was a neat concept. It does work. I plugged in a battery in the back and it started ticking, which was cool. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I looked at when I bought it was the condition of the battery compartment. Whenever I buy things that take batteries, I always check the battery compartment. Like some of the vintage items, when the batteries get left in, the acid starts to leak and it can actually destroy the battery compartment. So always check if you're going to be buying vintage things that take batteries. So anyway, this piece right here sells for about 40 to $65. So I think it would be perfect for a man cave and it's just a really neat piece. It's kind of like got this art deco kind of vibe to it. So I did have some people comment on the video that they had one like 50 years ago. So that's neat. But uh, let's get on to this thing. Now this was just different and fun. <laughs> I had never seen anything like this before. Now, this is a cloisonne. It is uh, enamel, but it is, it is brass. And the brass, it's kind of hard to explain. It's, it's enamel, but the brass kind of frames the enamel. And it's got this dog in it. And the dog is actually embroidered on silk. It is Japanese. And for this piece right here, I'm not exactly sure what it would go for because it's just kind of an oddball piece. I think the cloisonne it, it itself without the weird dog would probably go for, I want to say 15 to 20, just a little stand. I think it was probably originally intended as a photo frame or something like that. And then somebody had the bright idea to put a really funny looking dog in there with his tongue hanging out. So. That is a fun piece. I'm probably gonna expect to get, I wanna say around 20 bucks for it, which isn't a huge profit um, because I think I, I paid, it was March 14 and there was a discount on the booth, so I didn't pay 14, but it's just something different and quirky and I like to pick things up that I've never seen before and probably will never see again. And that was definitely one of those. So, um, we're just gonna keep moving down the table. Another piece we got was this little jar. And I absolutely, I saw this on the shelf and I was like, oh my gosh. You know, I have to admit that after our recent $1,000 unboxing of items that we got from Eric, um, I've granted, I've, all, I've always loved the Limoges and the early Belique and stuff, but after we got those boxes from Eric, I really, really just have this obsession with it now, worse than I did before. And so, and not only that, but I've gained a lot of knowledge on it that I didn't have before because each of those pieces that we listed took research and it took looking up and, you know, we had the Limoges books and I was looking through the Limoges books and really learning a lot more about the different makers and the different companies. And it was just really neat. But all this talk about Limoges, this is American Belique. Um, we've talked about that before, uh, so I'll just touch briefly on it because I know a lot of people are new tuning in, uh, but it is American Belique. It is not Irish Belique. Uh, Lennox, the company Lennox, actually originally wanted to call themselves Belique uh, after the Irish Belique, and <laughs> the Irish Belique said, you can't do that. And they said, oh, okay, well, we'll call ourselves Lennox. So this is a piece of early American Belique or Lennox Belique is what they call it. 
Now, a lot of the times you can find this and it will have a silver, it will actually be applied silver overlay. In this case, it is a silver paint. It's just got a silver sheen to it. It is not actual silver overlay. Uh, but this piece right here has the green mark and you could see that here. The early mark has kind of this painter's palette and it's got the L. Even though it says Balik, it has the L for Lennox. So that's how I know it's Lennox. And it's got somebody's initials on it. So, it, you know, that's the initials of the artist. This piece right here, it's a jar. I'm not actually sure of its purpose, but I would expect this piece to go for $45 to $65 because of the Art Deco lines. That mark on there, the green mark, is about turn of the century. Um, I believe it goes to Hager. He just threw his nut off his cage. He's like, I don't want this nut anymore. I'm going to throw it at you. We're good though. It was just a little frightening. <laughs> you stop that. I gave him a bunch of uh, food to try to keep him occupied while we were filming and it doesn't seem to be working. We've also got some actual Limoges. This right here. I really liked these and the reason that I was attracted to these pieces is not just because they were Limoges, but because there's this really like popular decorating style right now, boho, you guys know that, but there's there's this branch off of boho that includes lots of like greenery and like palm fronds and like it's just, it's real like greenery and stuff. And so when I saw these and I saw the greenery on them, I'm like, you know, that would kind of fit in a little bit. They're, they're a little fancy and they're a little bit Victorian, but it could also fit into like a boho type design. So I liked them. They are marked on the bottom by the manufacturer. That is the company that made the actual porcelain. So they more than likely made a blank white piece of porcelain. And that was Jean Poyat. I, I always butcher it, but it's JP. When you see JPL, that's uh, Jean Poyat with a T at the end, but I think the T is silent in French. I never took French, I took four years of Spanish. And then the L stands for Limoges. The initials on the bottom are the, the person who painted it, and it was KLN. So they painted these. Whether or not they worked for the porcelain house and painted there professionally or it was you know somebody who just decided they wanted to paint some porcelain I'm not sure there are some famous artists who painted for different porcelain houses I don't know um but I really liked these I would expect I want to stay to get 25 to 30 dollars for these just because they're really nice there's no damage the gold is really nice they're good pieces all right, another piece that we grabbed was this plate right here. And this was actually out of the same booth. <laughs> My ring is going off. Um, this was out of the same booth as the bleak jar and the, salt, the sugar and creamer. Um, this piece right here has blackberries painted on it. Now this piece does not have a manufacturer's name on it. Instead, it has simply initials and the date 1909. So the, the year this was painted was 1909. It's got the initials on it. Um, I don't know who the manufacturer is of this piece. The style of it makes me think maybe Bavaria, possibly Austria. He's gonna tip his bowl now. He just, you know, this is, the, this is filming during the day. Hager. He's gonna eat, he's gonna eat an almond. Okay, um, so this piece right here, I would expect probably to get around $25 for because it's a very nice painted bowl. It has blackberries on it, which makes me think that maybe it was a master berry bowl and there were smaller bowls that originally went with it, but I cannot prove that. Let's talk about this, because this is a really fun piece. This is a piece that I have passed on in the past and I just went back this time and decided I could not pass on it again because it was just sitting there looking at me with its eyeballs. And I, I don't know if that's a tongue with its tongue hanging out. I don't know. Uh, but it is a paperweight. 
It was made by Magdians and Shapiro in the 1980s. They made a lot of perfume bottles of this same style, but this piece, however, is a paperweight, which makes it a little unique because I could not find any other paperweights made by them. They were mostly perfume bottles. And I actually had somebody contact me about this piece and they contacted me through Messenger and the way they were asking questions and stuff, I suspect that they may be a collector or know a little bit about these pieces. And they thought that maybe this was originally intended as a perfume bottle, but for some reason they decided last minute to turn it into a paperweight because like I said, normally they were perfume bottles, but they, they're really neat designs. I was looking through some of them and I thought they were really cool. So this is a nice piece of art glass. It is a paperweight, like I said, 1980s. And it's so 1980s too with that face. I'm digging it. All right, we've got our ghosts. Yeah, because he almost tipped over. He's a little heavy. <laughs> so this piece right here is made by Jim Shore. We find a lot of stuff made by Jim Shore. And unfortunately, it's usually broken. I don't know why. It's just like this curse we have of Jim Shore. And like the Jim Shore pieces are almost always broken. Or like, you know, we find deer and the antlers are broken off. Or an arm is missing off an angel. It, it's such a bummer. But I found this piece. And I, I do remember I paid... $10 minus whatever discount was on the booth. Um, this piece caught my attention because it's Halloween. And I've noticed that, you know, Department 56 or, you know, Jim Shore or Anna Lee, you, you know, the Halloween stuff, there tends to, you know, it, it tends to garner some money. So this piece caught my eye. I said, oh, that's great for Halloween. And I decided to buy it. Uh, typically during the Halloween season, these sell for about 40 to 50 bucks, which is great. Uh, right now it is not Halloween, but I put it up for sale anyway. I'm kind of regretting it because I think it's sitting at like $15 and I'm like, I should have waited. I should have put it in the closet and waited, but I just, I like to keep stuff moving. So I just really wasn't that committed. Um, Andrew's like, you should put it in the closet. And I'm like, you know, I just I need to get it out. I need to keep it going. So anyway, this is, this is a really neat piece. It's, it's, uh, it's actually called, it's titled Ghostly Haunt. So it is a ghost with a little lantern and it's pretty neat. So this piece right here that we got is not marked on the back, but Sue and I were both in agreement that this is more than likely uh, Japanese, just judging by the design of it. Um, you know, it's got the florals, it's got a little bit of moriage. It's, you know, typical of Japanese. There is a little room for error there, but I'm leaning towards Japanese on this piece. Uh, there is there's no chipping or cracking and no, it's, it's in really good shape um, but for this I would probably expect to get I want to say 20 to 25 for that and I believe our investment was 10 so we're gonna double our money on it hopefully hopefully we double our money um, I've noticed that the you know Limoges the stuff from Austria that tends to do better for us than some of the Nippon stuff but unless there are always exceptions if the nippon is very like very just fancy and moriage and stuff and you know that's the exception to the rule but you know the plain kind of i mean this isn't plain this has some really nice gold and that's why i bought it because it wasn't just plain it had it had something you know um but in the case of most things we tend to do better on the european stuff than we do the Japanese. And I don't know if that's because our viewers kind of are expecting that stuff from us. We, we do do a lot with the Limoges these days. I don't know. All right, we've got one last piece here on the table. And it's one that I had a very hard time not hoarding. Um, it's this piece right here. <laughs> I had a really hard time not holding on to this. Um, it is a mid-century boudoir lamp. It is ceramic, it's a horse head lamp. This style was very popular. There are lots of different companies that made these horse head lamps. Um, I know Hager made some. I don't know the names of the other companies that made them, but there were lots of companies making these horse head lamps. So it's really hard to say, oh, well, this was definitely made by this company. Or, and because a lot of them are just so similar that it's just, it's really tough. But, but stylistically, they're good sellers for mid-century because mid-century collectors recognize that style and it just fits fits in perfectly. Now the great thing about this lamp is it has its original shade. Having, well I don't know if it's actually its original shade, but it, it's true to the era. And having shades that are true to the era on these mid-century lamps help boost the value. If, if this lamp was by itself, it would probably sell for $40 to $45. 
but because we've added the shade to it, I would expect to get $85 to $100 for this because of the shade. Um, the shade definitely adds value, and the same goes for just about any mid-century lamp. When you add the shade, you, I mean, you have to consider that a lot of these beautiful fiberglass shades are worth $50 and up. I, I mean, you can look at the sold listings, the, the fiberglass shades, they're worth some money. So when you find a lamp being sold with the shade, I mean, there's $50 in the shade right there. A lot of the times I'll go on eBay and I'll look for lamps and just look at the shades because a lot of the times people will list these old lamps, you know, for nothing and just not think anything of the shade. And it's like, oh, I'll buy that lamp just for the shade, just for the shade alone, because I know I can use that shade on another lamp and just boost the value. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking for lamps and for shades. But the other thing to keep in mind is that <laughs> these days to ship a lamp, has become super expensive. Uh, you know, um, I've mentioned this in a video in the past, but when I first started buying and selling lots of lamps, it was years ago, and the cost to ship something of that size, it wasn't really that bad. Uh, but nowadays, to ship something that large is about $65. So when I buy a lamp to sell it, I mean, this guy's small. I mean, he's not gonna cost very much to ship. But you start talking the big mid-century lamps, in order for me to buy a lamp for resale that's large scale, I have to expect to get at least $200, $250 for that lamp because I'm gonna expect the buyer to pay shipping. And as I mentioned, the if, you, if you've been with my channel for a while, you probably remember the shell lamps that I bought and I was super excited about. Those lamps for the pair cost, I think $125 to ship. I believe it was $125. And the buyer paid it. Thank gosh, I mean, they love the lamps, but it, it was just a lot of money. And you know, the buyer has to be willing to say, I love those lamps enough to pay $125 to have them shipped. So that's just something to keep in mind if we're going to be buying and selling lamps. But you know, with, with the idea of us opening up a store soon, in the next couple months, it's not like gonna be tomorrow. <laughs> it would probably be like in the spring, you know, I'm gonna maybe be buying some more lamps. We'll see, because I can sell them in a retail brick and mortar location. I can't sell them for as much as I could online because I'm not gonna have that, those California buyers wanting that mid-century modern stuff. I mean, it's just not a thing here in South Central Pennsylvania, but um, I, think, I think it'll be good. So anyway, uh, I have a hair appointment and I need to end this video, but I will see you guys tomorrow, later. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.